Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're continuing the series of episodes that I've been making about each individual NHL team talking about their lineups that I'm projecting, and then we're going to be going into their individual players, talking about each noteworthy player, and if I think you should consider drafting them. We're almost at the end of the series, guys, since we're going in alphabetical order. Today, we're doing the Vancouver Canucks, and after this, we only have Vegas, Washington, and Winnipeg to go. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you do want to take your support to the next level, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is down below. Let's jump right into it now. And let's take a look at the lines that I'm projecting for the Vancouver Canucks. And well, I'm not really projecting them because the Vancouver Canucks have been using these lines in the preseason. On the top line, Elise Pettersson, Ilya Mikheyev, and Andre Kuzmenko. On the second line, JT Miller up center, Tanner Pearson, and Connor Garland. And on the third line, Pod Colson, Bo Horvat, and Brock Besser on the wing, although he is injured for a little bit, so they have been using Lazar in that spot. Let's jump into the noteworthy players now, and we're going to be starting with their best player, JT Miller. And we're going to keep it short for JT Miller. Last year had an amazing career season with 99 points in 80 games. Now, do I think he's going to repeat that? Probably not, but I still think he's going to have himself a really, really solid year for Vancouver. He was the 19th best fantasy player in terms of fantasy points per game. And although I think he's going to drop a few spots, I think he's decent value here because he does give a pretty safe floor with shots on goal and hits. I would not draft him here, though, if you don't have hits in your league. Avoid JT Miller at all costs if you don't have the hits category. Next, I have Quinn Hughes, who ended up around the 127th best fantasy player in most leagues last year. And he only did miss six games, so it's not like he missed a whole lot of games, and that's why he finished so low. On top of that, he had a career-high year with 68 points in 76 games. He finally was not a crazy minus player last year, which was awesome to see. But guys, he's not a top 50 player. The reason being, despite his super great offensive production, he does almost nothing in terms of peripherals and most leagues peripherals are very, very important. Outside of pure points leagues, Quinn Hughes is an absolutely terrible draft pick at the current ADP that he's going at 50.6. Like, really, really bad. Anyone who drafts Hughes this high who isn't in a points leagues has just hurt their team tremendously. And I said it before, and I'll say it again, do not draft Quinn Hughes this high. Next, we have Elise Patterson, who's currently going at ADP of 52.0, and last year ended up the 91st player in terms of fantasy points per game. I'd like to be higher on Elias Pettersson. I really, really would. But last year we saw two completely different sides of him. It was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One half of the season he was completely useless and was doing absolutely nothing for your fantasy team. And the next half of the year he turned on the Jets and was absolutely insane. I will gladly take the L here telling you guys not to draft him if he has a great year. But personally, I don't think you can afford to draft this kind of inconsistency in your lineup, especially not this early in your draft. Like I've mentioned in the past, my strategy for the early rounds at least is to always draft super safe players that you know are going to produce in your lineup. Elias Pettersson is not that. Obviously you saw last year, very, very different start to the season and end to the season. He's someone that I am kind of scared of drafting this year. And around his ADP guys in the 50s, you can definitely get some guys who are a lot safer in your lineup. Next on the list is Thatcher Demko, currently going on ADP of 57.2. Last year, he had himself another nice season with 33 wins, a solid save percentage, and a solid goals against average, all considering he was playing for a team that didn't make the playoffs. Now, the Vancouver Canucks didn't really get that much better. Obviously, they got Kuzmenko, who is definitely a wild card, could definitely make your team a little bit better, but Demko will continue to see a lot of shots against, and I absolutely love him in points based leagues because he's going to see a lot of shots against, and he's still managing to get some wins as well, which is absolutely fantastic for those of you in points based leagues. Definitely one of the best goalies to be grabbing in those types of leagues. In categories of leagues, even though he's on a team that's not the best, he's still managing to put up wins. He's still managing to put up some solid save percentage, some solid GAAs. And that's why he's a pretty decent add there as well. And to top that off, he doesn't have a whole lot of competition for the backup because Spencer Martin is his backup. So Martin will probably only get the back-to-back -back games. Next, I have Brock Besser, who I know is out for at least the first fantasy week. And I have him as a possible sleeper. 
His shooting percentage and his on-ice shooting percentage were a little bit lower last year than his career average. With the proper deployment, he should be a little bit closer to a point per game than he was last year. And to start off the preseason, he did practice with JT Miller. So if he comes back from injury and they put him with JT Miller, he seriously has a lot of value. Towards the end of the preseason, he was playing with Horvat, which is still not a bad line. Pod Colson and Horvat is definitely still a pretty solid line. I think he's definitely bound to have a better year than he had last year, and that's why he's a decent sleeper pick for me. Next, I have Bo Horvat. Last year, finished the 75th best player in terms of fantasy points per game. His ADP is more than twice that at 153.4. So it seems like a big steal, right? His shooting percentage, though, was... 3% higher than his career average, and his on-ice shooting percentage was about 1% high as well. So yeah, he's going to regress a little bit from that pace that he was on last year. He's also a natural center, which makes him a little bit less valuable in most leagues that have uh, forward position eligibility. Still, I like him a lot, though, since he is going so late, and he does definitely have a lot more value than where he's currently going in drafts. And if you're in a league that doesn't have position eligibility for forwards, like it's all just forward, 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 forward in your league, yeah, Bor Horvat is an absolute steal at his current ADP. Next, I have Vasily Pod Colson, who is currently going at an ADP of 161.7. And I'm not super high on him this year. He could be a bit of a sleeper, but for that to be the case, he would have had to make a lot of strides from his rookie year, like huge strides. As you can see from his stats last year, 26 points in 79 games, he was nowhere near being fancy relevant. So I have to see it first to believe it this year, which is why personally, all of the avoiding him. He's quite a risky pick. Next, I have Oliver ekman Larson, and last year you probably grew sick of me saying, do not draft Oliver ekman Larson." It's the same thing this year. Last year, he did not have a good year with only 29 points in 79 games played. He was okay on the hits front, but really, nothing's too special. In leagues that count hits, he was the 288th best fantasy player in terms of fantasy points per game. Just, just not good, guys. And this year, I don't expect anything better from him. Quinn Hughes is ahead of him on the depth chart. And as long as Hughes is healthy, OEL has next to no value. Luke Shen, on the other hand, in leagues that counted hits, ended up as the 171st best fantasy player in terms of fantasy points per game. His offensive production wasn't particularly great. 17 points in 66 games, although that was kind of comparable to OEL, which is kind of sad. But where he really had the value, guys, was was hits, right? He was second in the entire league in hits after Radko Gudis with 270 three hits. Absolutely fantastic. And he was also pretty decent on the block shots front with 96 block shots in only 66 games. So if he would have played a full game season, would have had well over 100 block shots, which is pretty solid. So Luke Shen is definitely someone in categories leagues. If you need hits and block shots, he's definitely going to help you out with that category. And if you're even in a points-based league that counts hits, that gives you points for each hit, he's someone that's going to give you a pretty safe floor every single night as well. And I kind of like drafting him where he's currently going in drafts. Just do not draft him if you don't have hits in your league. He's going to be pretty valueless. Next, I have Connor Garland only being drafted in 27% of leagues, had 52 points in 77 games last year. Shooting percentage was a tiny bit low, but honestly, it's probably not going to get that much better. He is skating on the line right now with JT Miller and Tanner Pearson, so that's always a good sign. And we'll probably only see power play two time. Now, that's not terrible, but I'm not expecting Garland to suddenly have a super electrifying season and suddenly be super fancy relevant. That being said, he's a pretty safe draft pick this late in the draft. He's nothing too exciting. And at this point in the draft, I like taking chances. I'd much rather draft a guy like Andre Kuzmenko, who definitely has more explosive potential than Connor Garland, and I'll talk about him a little bit later. But at the same time, I still don't think Carla Garland's a particularly bad pick. I think he's going to do decent enough. Next, I have Ilya Mikheyev, who's only being drafted in 7% of leagues. And he carries a little bit of an injury risk. In his only two full 82-game seasons, he missed a minimum of 29 games apiece. And he is injured right now, so that doesn't exactly instill confidence to, for me in his overall health this season. Now that I've given you the cons in drafting him, though... Here are the pros. With the games that he did play last year, he ended up finishing as the 119th best player in terms of fantasy points per game. And he was practicing along with Pedersen and Kuzmenko, so that could end up being a really good line this year, and he could end up getting a really good shot to really produce offensively this year. 
Overall, I do like the idea of throwing a dart at him this year if you do have a decent amount of IR spots or IR plus spots because he is injured to start the year. Next, I have Tyler Myers, who's only being drafted in 7% of leagues and last year finished as the 319th best player in terms of fantasy points per game. At first glance, that sucks. But guys, he had a 0.8% shooting percentage last year, and I think that's the lowest I've ever seen for a full 82 game season. Like, that's insane. In his previous two years in Vancouver, he averaged more than 5% shooting percentage, so it's a little strange that it dipped to 0.8%. With an adjusted shooting percentage this year, obviously he's not going to shoot at 0.8% again. He ends up finishing as the 268th best fantasy player in terms of fantasy points per game, which isn't terrible. And he's also someone who's managed to stay very, very healthy over the past few years. So he carries a very low injury risk. So in super, super deep leagues that count hits, Myers makes for a decent pick. If you're really, really desperate for a defenseman at the end of the draft, he should finish somewhere between the 250th range to 300th best fantasy player. And if you're in a really deep league, that's good enough for you for a defenseman. Next up, Andre Kuzmenko, the newcomer to the Vancouver Canucks, signed straight out of the Russian leagues, had a pretty good year in Russia last year, and he's not actually considered a rookie technically this year because he's a little bit too old. He turns 27 during the season this year. But guys, he's someone that could definitely make an impact in the Canucks lineup. Watching the preseason game that I did last night, he scored two goals against the Seattle Kraken, and he's looking pretty good alongside Elise Pedersen on that line. Now, he's someone that could make for a really sneaky pick late in the draft because he's someone that nobody really knows a whole lot about, and we don't really know how he's going to pan out in the NHL. He could end up being a total bust, but as late as he's going in drafts, he doesn't even have an ADP right now. He's definitely worth throwing a dart at and seeing how he does because he could definitely have a nice breakout season this year, especially with the players that he's playing with like Kuzmenko, with one of your last picks of the draft. And last but not least, I have Tanner Pearson, who's a left winger. I only included him here because he is getting on a line with JT Miller and Connor Garland. And last year, he finished as the 206th best fantasy player in terms of fantasy points per game. Uh, it was about a point every two games or so. And he shot the puck a decent amount. Now, he's not someone that I'm overly excited about. And he's not someone that I'm drafting as of yet. But if the season starts and he really catches fire on that line with JT Miller and Garland, which he can, I definitely consider picking him up in deep leagues. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you do want to take your support to the next level, the link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.